The number of the CKD patients admitted to government hospital is increasing year by year. Uh, that's, that's why it's uh, in accordance with the wall incidents. So this slide diagram clearly shows that the number increased from the 2011 to 2016. So when we look back to the uh, Center Center, Dashri Refer Center of the Yango General Hospital at YSH, uh, uh, the, the admitted number of the CKD to the tertiary department uh, every year is uh, uh, gradually increasing. So, compared with the 2007 and 2016, number is a nearly double. So, what are the underlying costs of those CKD? So, according to the US RDS data, the highest cost of the uh, CKD is the diabetes mellitus. A second hypertension, third lumbonephritis, and fourth is the congenital cystic disease diseases. So, when again in our country, what is the common is commonest incidence? According to the Ministry of Health, the mass in the year 2012, uh, the the cost of the highest cost of the CKD in our country is diabetes, mellitus, 4.5 percent, and hypertension, 3.9 percent. So what about the mortality? So mortality of the CKD in our country is so every year uh, we compare the number of the admitted cases to the government hospital and uh, their mortality. In 2012, mortality, CKD mortality is 30%, but in 2013 and 14, the mortality is less, around 30%. Maybe uh, we can support with the many uh, renal replacement therapy in later part of the year. So to concern with their risk factor, some risk factors we can modify and some are we cannot modify. So we have to pay attention to the what are the modifying risk factors. Those are diabetes, hypertension, history of acute kidney injury to fall, and then frequent NSAID usage. So when patient went into the end stage renal disease, CKD stage 5, what are what treatment options we can support in our country? So there are various treatment options for end stage kidney disease, CKD stage 5. We can, we can support with the hemodialysis, the chronic ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, and kidney transplant. So let me go on to that. How are we going to delete the progression of the CKD and how to manage their complication? There are many factors that we can, uh, by correcting those factors, we can delay the progression of chronic kidney disease. Those are the, those are the anemia, blood pressure control, CKD, FBD, hyperuricemia, a wide of the nephrotoxic medications, and dietary factors, and the physical activity. So first, uh, I would like to mention about the anemia in chronic kidney disease. In chronic kidney disease, anemia is an almost universal complication. They, when the CKD patient has an anemia, they reduce the quality of life as well as that. They will develop many adverse clinical outcomes. So that's a uh, bar diagram clearly show that uh, in two surveys of the National Health and Nutritional Survey 3 and 4, whenever the CKD stages progress, the prevalence of anemia is increasing. So regarding the causes of anemia, the causes of anemia in CKD is multifactorial. There are many factors causing the anemia. Uh, the commonest major causes are related EPU deficiency, others are iron deficiency, blood loss, significant reduction of the circulating RBC lifespan, secondary to the uremia, hemolysis, chronic inflammation, other substrate like the B12 and folic deficiency, and the bone marrow suppression. The major cause is related EPU deficiency. So when our CKD patients have a diagnosis of anemia, in someone who has uh, over 15 years with CKD, they are hemoglobin concentration less than 13 in male and uh, less than 12 in female, we diagnose as a uh, anemia. So, if, when patient has anemia, we have to evaluate 
uh, what are the underlying cause to correct their anemia. So initial eva evaluation includes complete blood count, reticular site count, ferritin level, uh, transferrin saturation, and visual and folate level. So in which after evaluation, if the sun patient has a normal chromic normocytic anemia, we diagnose as a EPO deficiency. So when the uh, patient has an EPO uh, deficiency, we have to give uh, uh, erythro erythrocyte stimulating agents. For that ESA initiation, uh, before studying the ESA, ESA, we have to correct all the correctable causes and then we have to balance the potential benefit by using the step one and then potential fix. After balancing, uh, we have to start the uh, ESA. So before giving the ESA, we have to break caution if there is a active malignancy and history or recent stroke or history of malignancy. So in which level of the hemoglobin we have to start the ESC? If someone with the hemoglobin more than 10, we, it's usually not recommended to initiate. If less than 10, we have to, we can start the ESC, but need the individualization based on the, the following factors. In CKD stage five, the ESC therapy uh, should study before hemoglobin fall down below 9. So, study around 10. So, so, what are the aims of using the ESC? By using the ESC, we have to maintain the hemoglobin level uh, to the target above 11.5 gram per deciliter. So, we can, uh, you can answer how much above 11.5 uh, gram. If a hemoglobin reach above 13, there are so many adverse complications. So the better to keep in between 11 to 12 gram per deciliter. Seafarm, caring for well-being.